Okay, yeah. Uh, so in this section, uh, we will talk about the call flows uh, that pertain uh, to the S1 AP uh, protocol or the S1 control plane. Uh, this is the interface between the E node B and the MME. So um, the first procedure we are going to look at is called the S1 setup uh, message. So here, let's first look here on how this interaction actually takes place. So we have the E node B on one side, and then we have the MME on the other side. Now, whenever a new E node B comes up uh, and has, uh, has to perform uh, LT service, it has to first establish uh, the S1 connection uh, with the MME. And the S1 connection, we all know, uh, the S1 AP protocol uh, uses SCTP as the transport protocol. So even before the S1 connection comes up, we need to have an SCTP association uh, that is up between both these network elements. And uh, if you look at the uh, RFC uh, for SCTP, there is a standard way of how this SCTP association actually comes up. And the way it does is, the E node B first sends what is called a init message to the MME. The MME responds with an acknowledgement uh, called a init ACK. At that point, uh, the E node B sends a cookie and the MME responds with a cookie ACK. Uh, and if at that point, once a cookie ACK has been received at the E node B, the, uh, the E node B and the MME have a SCTP association that can be considered successful. At that point, uh, once the SCTP association has been established, the E node B would send up a S1 setup request to the MME telling the MME, hey, I am this E node B, uh, here are my uh, details, uh, and you know I want to establish an S1 connection and then at that point, the MME compares the params, the parameters listed in the S1 setup request with its configuration. And if everything passes, it will send a S1 setup response, which can either be a success or a failure. And at that point, the S1 connection would come up. So now if you look at a real world uh, TCP dump on the S1 AP interface that captures this interaction, you will see the following. So you have the source uh, IPs listed here. You have the destination IPs listed here. So in this case, the source IP here is the E node B IP, and then this is the MME IP. The E node B starts off by sending uh, init. Now here you can see there are two instances of init, and you may wonder why they are happening. They are roughly about you know one uh, millisecond apart. And the reason is if a network element that sends in it does not hear back from the other endpoint, it can retransmit that in it, which is what happened here. So the E node B sent in it back out. The MME got that in it and it sends a in it ACK. Uh, at that point, the E node B sends a cookie uh, echo and the MME responds with a cookie ACK. So up until this scenario, up until this point, we are following this call flow for the SCTP association. Now, once the SCTP association is up, that means our transport is all set and I can proceed with the next higher layer of communication, which is the S1 setup. At that point, um, you see that the E node B sends a S1 setup request to the MME. Now let us look into the details around that S1 setup request. So here layer one is uh, what we have seen so far. Layer two is ethernet, layer three is the IP protocol or the uh, network layer. And you see the source and destination IP. Uh, then we have the SCTP, which was negotiated in the previous stage, right? We have the init and all those things happening. And at that point, uh, the, the source and desk ports are also negotiated. So we have that. Then within the S1 setup request, you see that the procedure code here is S1 setup, which is a procedure. And then these are the parameters that are passed on by the E node B to the MME. You have the 
global enodeb id which includes the plmn that the enodeb wishes to broadcast um, the enodeb also passes the tracking area list uh, these are the list of all the tracking areas that the enodeb wants to serve uh, it passes the enodeb name so this name is typically a name on a on a enodeb level um, and that is also passed on to the mme and then you have uh, something called like a default paging DRX parameters, uh, discontinuous reception parameters that are also passed on to the MME. Now the MME takes all this into account and then compares against its config. Namely, uh, what it uh, does is it takes into account the PLMN and the tracking area code. And then sees if its configuration is meant to support these two elements or not. If it is not, then we will see a S1 setup response with a failure cause. And then this failure cause can be uh, common causes are unknown PLMN. So say on your E node B, you have a PLMN that is not yet supported in your core or your MME, you will see a S1 setup fail with unknown PLMN. That is one of the most likely causes of a S1 setup failing. But in this case, everything is successful. So you can see S1 setup response is all good to go. And at that point, the S1 setup is complete. So common causes for failure of S1 setup, uh, we have IP routing. So make sure that there is a path between the E node B and the MME S1 IP addresses. This can be checked by performing the following checks. You can do a ping test from the E node B to the MME and also in the opposite direction. If this passes, then most likely your IP routing is good to go. Uh, you can take a TCP dump on the E node B or the MME side to verify the packet flow. Make sure your ports and your responses are all as per expectation and as per design. Incorrect PLMN. Ensure PLMN configured on the E node B is supported on the MME. So make sure that that is true because in case of RAN sharing, for example, like in Moken, uh, E node B will send a list of PLMNs to the MME and the MME will respond with a list of supported PLMNs. If you have to ensure at least one PLMN is supported on the MME side for the S1 connection to come up. If it's not, then you will see uh, that the S1 connection setup fails. Uh, and this is a quite a, a common cause that I have seen um, in most of the networks where the PLMN configuration is a mismatch. Uh, here's an example of a TCP dump showing that exact same thing. So we had uh, the, e, um, this is a TCP dump where the, the MME is sending uh, to the E node B a S1 setup failure message. And within that failure message, your cause is listed as unknown PLMN. And then this procedure keeps happening because the E node B will continue keep retrying. So you can see the E node B is sending S1 setup request again and again, and it is getting a failure again and again. And then if you expand this message, uh, you can see the cause being listed as unknown PLMN. So make sure when you are troubleshooting that you take a TCP dump and you can look at uh, the failure uh, cause in the message and that will most likely tell you what the issue is.